Deputy Minister of Higher Education, Mduduzi Manana, has been released on 5,000 rand bail after a brief appearance in the Ramberg Magistrate Court. He's been charged with assault with intent to commit grievous bodily harm. His court appearance follows Manana's admission to assaulting a woman, Mandi Satuma, at a nightclub over the weekend. The police minister says the deputy minister's case is disappointing because people like him should protect women and not harm them. Earlier today, rights groups questioned Manana's alleged preferential treatment. This was after he reportedly went straight to a senior prosecutor's office after entering the court via a back door. Manana has apologized for the assault incident, but many say it's not enough. The matter has been postponed to September 13th. Meanwhile, the Department of Higher Education and Training has distanced itself from the incident. The department, along with President Jacob Zuma and the ANC, expressed their shock and disappointment at Manana's behavior. Reports say he also faces assault charges in Ermelo from a separate incident. A petition is circulating to have Manana dismissed as the scourge of violence against women continues in the country. What from the police is that he handed himself over this morning. Um, he, it was a first appearance, obviously, and um, the matter was postponed to the 13th of September for further investigation. Um, this is a Schedule 1 offence, obviously, and um, the burden lies with the state. So as the state, we had no grounds to oppose his bail, hence we agreed on an amount of 5,000, and therefore bail was set on, on an amount of 5,000 rents. If the prosecutor thought that the accused was a threat to society or the victims obviously we would have opposed bail so at this point we have no grounds to oppose bail hence we agreed on an amount of 5,000 together with um, his attorney. Well uh, if one had to look at the video evidence that has been made available and if that evidence is true and it reflects exactly what happened on that evening then certainly one could expect a conviction. Um, you know it is a, a, a charge of assault with the intent to cause grievous bodily harm and it is for the state to bring that charge to prove the evidence against the accused person and then for the, for the accused person to try and attempt to convince the court that he's in fact not guilty of that charge. But what, way before that, the person, if he's implicated in a crime, he's already admitted to having committed that crime, one expects him to be arrested and brought before court. You know, if, if one had to look at the interests of the victims in this incident, if something happens to the victims, if their lives are in danger uh, and, and that they suffer injuries as a result of the Deputy Minister not having been arrested yet, then certainly there could be a civil charge that can be laid against the police at a later stage. But the, for now, there's no limit as to how long the police need to take when they arrest a person. One also needs to look at the other side of the coin, and that is if a person is innocent and you go and arrest him, then his rights are being infringed upon. This scenario is different. Uh, I think we've, uh, we, it's common cause that the Deputy Minister has admitted to having uh, assaulted the, the, the victims in this incident. So we'll have to wait and see what the, what the state and the police decides. Arresting him would have sent a strong signal to say, actually, we don't tolerate this in South Africa. But letting him you know, off the hook, I, I, we understand politics, he needed to vote, fine. But then cuff the guy so that the other guy who is not a leader like he is, can see that actually there's no, there's no space for this in South Africa. But it's like other high profile cases in South Africa that because you know someone in government, it doesn't happen. In my industry, in the entertainment industry, I wish a lot of these women would come out because we know the things that we go through. But because at the end of the day, you must think about your job, you must think about your work, you must think about your livelihood, then you're afraid to speak. So what must happen? Must we be afraid to walk down the streets, also be afraid at home, also be afraid at work? Where should a woman in South Africa get peace and actually live her life? Where? How can I? We're calling upon uh, all political parties and, uh, and all uh, government officials to really please uh, come on board and make sure that we, we put an end at this. Uh, it's, it's really, really, really getting out of hand and it's, 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 it's really uh, um, you know, almost uh, bringing people to a stage where they are feeling helpless, uh, and we we can't afford to to have our political guys not showing the the, the, the right foot forward. Uh, this guy should have been arrested on Sunday morning, uh, irrespective of who he is. They know where he lives. They they. I mean, he's an official of the country. They should have gone there, arrested him, 
put him behind bars until he appears at court. At least they would have said to society, something is happening from our political standpoint. The violence in our society from time to time, uh, again, is always linked to alcohol and beer halls. The abuse of alcohol by our citizens is robbing the state of billions of rands per year where our hospitals are jam-packed with injuries from assaults, especially on Sundays and Mondays. The example of this is seen in the case of our own comrade, Deputy Minister Duduzi Manana, who today appeared at the Randberg court after handing himself over to the police this morning, following his constant cooperation with the investigators from the day the matter was reported.